Hey, have you ever considered buying another home? I mean, an apartment or a house where you could live with your entire family? If so, you probably know that it's easier said than done, especially in a big city, because the prices are sky-high wherever you are, and that's not to mention the overpopulation. But consider this, there are literally millions of empty homes in China. A perfect place to settle, isn't it? Well, not exactly. And here's why. I'll start from the very beginning. I live in a rather large city, and the cost of housing here can drive you crazy. Like many, I'm renting an apartment right now, but I've recently started to feel annoyed by having to give away my money to someone who can throw you out of their place at any time. So I began searching for other options. I must say that I'm alone and I'm quite a free spirit, so moving to another city or even another country is not out of the question. Well, I surfed the web, and that's when I stumbled upon the news from China, namely about its whopping 50 million empty homes just waiting to be inhabited. What's the deal? I asked myself. 50 million homes! The number just couldn't fit into my head. That's an entire population of some small European country. I decided to look closely into the matter, and I was pretty shocked by what I found. There are indeed whole cities standing more or less empty in China. However, the tricky part is that they're all bought and sold. How is that, you wonder? Well, so did I. The answer is pretty simple. The Chinese rush to buy property like crazy. Many of the apartments in these huge complexes are someone's second or, wait for it, third homes. Of course, no one lives in these places. They have their primary apartments where they live with their families. They give the second ones to their adult children. The third ones stay empty, just in case. Therefore, the districts where there are more of these third home dwellings look quite deserted. This seems a likely scenario for a country with a high GDP, which China definitely is. But I was so stupefied by what I learned about their property shopping spree that I wanted to find out how much the average Chinese person actually earns. The surprising truth is that the salaries there aren't that high. Statista.com says, for example, that in 2017, the nationwide average was 74,318 yuan, which is roughly 11,000 bucks US. Now, the cost of a new apartment, as far as I understood, may start from around 2,000 yuan $300 per square foot. I did a little math, and my eyebrows went all the way up. To buy a decent 700-foot apartment in China, you'll need at least 19,500 bucks. That's almost twice the yearly income of the average Chinese person. So where in the world do they find the money to buy second and even third apartments? The answer is amazing in its simplicity. They share and they save. China is well known for its respect toward tradition, and that concerns family as well. Children are strictly a product of marriage there, so if a couple wants to have a baby, they need to get married first. And newlyweds naturally need some place to live. Do you follow me yet? Cool, because I'm getting to the point here. Let's be honest, living with your whole family in a small apartment, and I mean your parents, your spouse, and your kids, can be horrible. So <laughs> you desperately need your own corner. But remember the average salary. Even a mortgage will only be a solution if you earn enough and live in a city cheap enough. That is, if you do it all on your own. As a traditionalist society, China is very strong on family bonds. Basically, if you ask your family to help you out with the money you need to buy an apartment, they'll most likely give you a hand. And that's where the saving part comes into play. Most Chinese people are very disciplined and not used to squandering. They think about the future a lot. And so, they save money. Well, I'm no stranger to saving myself. I normally put aside about 10% of my wages for big purchases I'm planning. But when I learned how much the Chinese save, my jaw dropped all the way to the floor. They save 40% of their salary. Can you imagine putting aside almost half of your income? I wouldn't even survive on what's left. They do, however, and they seem to find it comfortable. Combining these two aspects, you get a clear picture of a typical Chinese family. There are seniors who work their whole life and save a lot of money. Then there are young men and women who also work and save and who have the help of their extended families to buy themselves a new home when the time comes. Okay, they have the necessary resources for that. 
that explains the second home. What it doesn't explain even a tiny bit, though, is why they would need a third one. To leave it empty? Just in case? What? Well, to understand this, I had to dig even deeper into the cultural and social life of China. And there, I finally found my answers. The one-child policy that started back in 1979 left the country in a very tricky situation. Because of this initiative, there are many more men than women in China today, which leaves the housing issue wide open and on the shoulders of the men. To be able to marry, a young man has to have at least one apartment in his property portfolio or his fiancé's parents won't even consider him a good match for their daughter. Traditionalists, remember? So families that have sons start saving money right from their kid's birth to be able to provide them with a separate home later. If they have not one but two apartments, that increases their chances of starting their own family. Well, that does it! I've finally cracked this nut! Families buy several homes for their kids, especially their sons, to give them a better future. Yet, there's one more thing to consider. The supply of housing wouldn't grow so fast if it weren't for the profit of local governments. You see, prefectures and cities get their fair share of money from the growing property market. The more it grows and the more people buy, the larger the GDP becomes. And so it happens that local government officials get promoted for such growth. Seems like a win-win to me. In fact, though, this growth is rather artificial, which makes the whole city-building thing quite a bubble waiting to pop. Let's not forget that there are over 50 million homes that aren't actually inhabited. They're just bought by people who are in need of some certainty. This leaves many more unfortunate guys without any housing opportunities. That's a lot of people living in cramped apartments with no choice but to wait for their chance and work like there's no tomorrow. But there's one thing that made me believe in this building boom. Remember how so many headlines of the world's newspapers called the newly built empty districts in China ghost towns? That was a few years ago, but you can still find this stuff even today. Well, that turned out to be completely untrue. Those places were pretty much uninhabited back in the day, simply because very few people had managed to move there yet. Take the district of Chenggong in Kangming. It's probably one of the brightest examples of these so-called ghost towns. But if you look at it today, you'll see there are thousands of people living happily in their brand new apartments. The district is pretty beautiful, by the way, with a rich infrastructure and lots of things to do. The same can be said for Ordos, the most famous ghost city of China. It stopped being one as soon as all the socially important objects were completed, and the flow of people in there has been pretty large ever since. According to government authorities, more than 153,000 people currently live in the district. Of course, this isn't as many as they wanted there to be. But it still doesn't qualify as a ghost town, if you ask me. At last, I completed my little research project and felt satisfied with what I found. If only I could remember why I did it in the first place! Anyway, tell me, Brightsiders, what other interesting facts about living in China do you know? Share your insights in the comments below. I've become so involved in this that I'd love to hear anything you have to say. Don't forget to like this video, share it with your friends, and click the big red subscribe button to always stay on the bright side.